Hi there, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the mixed material in Octane for Maya. So I'm using the Octane underscore materials 01.mac, and we have our four spheres and our little sci fi bar structure here. So I'm going to go into the outliner and let's expand the group here. Select all the objects in the group, go to the Octane render shelf, and I'll click on this fourth icon from the left here to create a new mixed material. And uh, let me select one of the surfaces here, go to the Octane Mixed Materials uh, tab, and you can see that our material is pretty simple. We just have uh, an amount slider, a texture slot for the amount, two material slots, and then a slot for displacement. So let's go into Hypershade. So go to Windows Rendering Editors, Hypershade. I'm going to clear out the work area here and bring that new mixed material down here. Graph its input and output connections, so we don't have much connected to it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Octane section and under Octane Materials, click on Octane Glossy Material twice to create two glossy materials. And I'll select this glossy material and let's make it a bright red color. Let's select this one. Set its diffuse to bright green. And then to connect them to the mix material, I'll select the mix material, open up the attribute editor, and then middle mouse button drag the red material into material slot one, green material into material slot two. You can see the result is we have a yellow surface because in computer graphics, red plus green makes yellow. So if I move the amount slider to one side or the other, if I have it all the way at one, we have the red material. If I have it all the way at zero, we have the green material and anything in between kind of blends them together. That's pretty straightforward. So we can also control the amount using a grayscale or black and white texture. It could be procedural or an image texture. Let's uh, play around here a little bit. I'm gonna click on the checker box icon next to a mount and under Octane Textures, I'm gonna click on Octane Dirt Texture. This makes it pretty obvious how the amount works. I now have a dirt texture or an ambient occlusion texture, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, controlling the blending between the red and green material. So I can go in here and start to play with the settings here in the dirt texture and you can see the result. So it's a great way to do things like if you were going to have kind of like dirt or wear and tear on here, you might have kind of a dull material for the cracks and then a shinier material for the exposed bits where we can see the red. Uh, you can also use an image texture. So for this particular model, I created a metallic texture using Substance Painter. So this is what the texture looks like. So the light colors correspond to the metal parts of the surface and the dark colors correspond to the non-metal parts of the surface. Now if I go to the Octane Mix material, I'm going to break the connection for a mount here. Click on the checkerboard icon under Octane Textures. I'm going to use an octane float image texture. So that's a grayscale or black and white image. In the source images folder, I'll go into bar machine textures and find the big bar machine 1001 metallic.png texture. And I'll add that. Now you can sort of see this is the result here. So the idea behind this texture is I wanted to have these parts where you see the kind of red and orange. I wanted that to be a metal shader and then the green bit to be a glossy shader. So you can see there's a little bit of glossiness here on top of the where I want the metal as well to kind of represent kind of wear and tear. So let's go into Hypershade and I'm going to create an octane metallic material and I'm going to select the mixed material and middle mouse button drag this over material slot one to replace that red glossy material. So that's no longer connected. Now we have a metallic material. You can see because it's nice and shiny there. Those are the bits that are going to be metal. And then for my glossy material, this green material that we have down here, let's get rid of the dirt texture because we're not using it. And under glossy material, I'm going to click on the slot for diffuse. I'm going to choose an octane image texture and let's use the Big Bar Machine base color. 
So now you can see the base color is applied to the sort of non-metallic parts, or the parts that would be like paint or whatever. And then the metallic material is on these bits here, like these large triangles and some of the detail right here. So just to kind of make this look a little bit nicer, let's play with some of these materials a little bit. Um, I'll go to the Octane Glossy material and let's click on the checker box next to roughness. So I'll use the float image texture for roughness and we're gonna use that big bar machine roughness texture. And then let's go into the uh, normal map. So click on here. Click on the checkerboard next to normal. Choose octane image texture. And I'll use that normal map. So as shaders go, it's pretty simple and fairly straightforward. So we can go in here and maybe play with the index of refraction a little bit. Let's set this up to 1.6. So now let's uh, edit the octane metallic material that's connected to material one in the mixed material is applied to this thing. In other words, the material that's applied to these shiny bits right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit and uh, I'm actually gonna use the same image texture. Let's name these. I'm gonna call this uh, bar machine diffuse so you can keep track of everything so that's bar machine diffuse and i'm going to connect this to the diffuse channel of our metallic material now if you watch the video on the metallic material you'll realize that this is not actually going to do a whole lot we won't see very much just yet what we can do just to make this a bit more obvious so i'm going to select all the surfaces in big bar machine and I'm going to zoom in here in the metallic material, right click over this and choose assign material to viewport selection. That way we're only looking at the metallic material so it's not too confusing. And then we'll reconnect the mixed material once we're done tuning this. I'm gonna take that same bar machine diffuse texture and I'm gonna connect it to the specular channel. And now we can see that the specular color is being affected by that same texture map. Now what I'll do is I'll take that metallic texture, so let's rename this, let's call this bar machine metal. And I'm gonna connect this to the specular map. So next, let's connect that same roughness image. So let's rename the roughness image. We'll call this bar machine roughness. And I'll connect this to the roughness channel. And then we need to adjust our index of refraction so it starts to look a little bit more metallic. And I'm gonna keep things fairly simple. I'm going to choose IOR plus color. So that means it's gonna use the color from the specular map and then the index of refraction from this slot right here. So let's set this at 2.8, just kind of a random value. Let's see how that looks. Then we can use this field to adjust the intensity of the Fresnel effect down here. So let's put this to 1.2. Most of the surfaces are fairly flat, so it's not going to be super obvious. Uh, three is a bit high. But at least it makes it fairly obvious what's going on. Let's, let's set it down to, let's try 1.5 just for fun. So you can see with the metallic material using a specular map, I do have a nice metallic quality to these parts right here, but the black parts of the specular map in other words, all these bits are blocking the metallic quality from coming through on these parts right here, which is kind of neat. But in this case, uh, it's a little bit too extreme because these parts now look like a diffuse material. I still want to have some nice reflective qualities to these parts of the surface right here. So that's where the mixed material comes in really handy. So now what we can do is I'm going to 
select these objects here, the big bar machine, and then reapply the mix material. So sign material to viewport selection. And now you can see I have a little bit more control over the reflections. If I select that glossy material and pull up the specular highlights and maybe uh, increase the index of refraction, you can see that we are getting some reflective qualities there. So our material is still fairly simple. Even though it's a mixed material, you can get much more complex, obviously, uh, especially when you start adding utility nodes to kind of color correct these textures. Let's just do a quick review of what we got going on here. I'm going to select the mixed material and choose graph input and output connections just to make it a little bit neater. Let's rename this. Always good to name your materials. We'll call this bar machine mix. And so in material slot one, we have this material right here, our octane metallic material. So we'll call this bar machine. Metal mat. So that is being plugged into slot number one. Slot number two, we have a glossy material. So we'll call this bar machine glossy. Not being very consistent with my naming convention here, but you get the idea. Bar machine glossy, bar machine metal. And then for the amount, we have this metal texture. Let's make sure we call this metal texture. And that bar machine metal texture is being plugged into the amount channel of our mixed material. And it's also being plugged into the specular map of our metallic material. All right, so it's got two connections there, specular map and amount. And then for the bar machine metal material, we have a diffuse texture, which is being plugged into the diffuse channel and the specular channel. So a specular map is metal texture, specular texture is the diffuse, and diffuse texture is the diffuse. And then we have a roughness texture that's being plugged in here as well to the roughness channel of the metal material. You can see it's coming down here, going into roughness. And then up here, our glossy material, we have that same diffuse texture being plugged into the diffuse channel. That same diffuse texture being plugged into the diffuse channel, that same roughness texture being plugged into the roughness channel. Then we have a normal map, which is being plugged into the normal texture channel. So let's connect this normal map to the normal channel of our metal material. So we're going to middle mouse button drag this over normal down here. Now it's connected to both of those. So it looks complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. A lot of the same textures are being shared between the two materials. And then what you could do is you could stick color correction nodes in between here if you wanted to have a little bit of a different quality in the textures between the two materials. Let's, uh, let's collapse some of these for the moment. So the beauty of the mixed material is that you can layer other mixed materials in order to create a more complex layered type shader. So I'm going to do that here. And I'm going to take our existing mix material and blend it with a diffuse material. So let's do this. Let's create a new mix material. So I'll go to Octane Materials, click on this mix material right here. And we'll call this Bar Machine Dirty Mix. We're going to add a little dirt to this. And I'm going to middle mouse button drag bar machine mix to material one slot of this mix material. And then let's create a octane diffuse material and plug this into material two. Let's make this a very dark 
and dull high amount of roughness that's probably too dark fair amount of roughness dark color so it's gonna be kind of like dirt and let's select all the surfaces here in big bar machine and right click over bar machine dirty mix material and choose assign material to viewport selection so now what we have is a straight up blend between those two materials so i take bar machine dirty mix and i move the slider to one side i get a dull brown shader and slide it to the other side i get our mixed material with the metallic and glossy qualities to them. So I'm going to click on the checkerboard next to a mount, pull up the create render node window and choose uh, octane dirt texture. And then you can see I can use this now to kind of dial in some dirtiness into the crevices of the surface. But it'll also be kind of dull because this is a diffuse shader. So we don't have any reflections in those parts. It's a fairly simple technique, but you can start to layer more and more uh, mixed materials on top of each other to create a really truly uh, complex material with a lot of very realistic qualities. This has just been a super simple setup just to kind of demonstrate the basic principles. So that's it for the basics of the mixed material. So if you want to take a closer look at the shader setup, you can go into the project files and the scene folders. There's the octane underscore materials underscore o2 dot ma file, which has the uh, complete layered mix shader for you to take a look at and kind of deconstruct.